What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at South by Southwest 2024. I am sitting with the team behind a movie that like stressed me out to no end. And I feel like that's the highest compliment for what you achieve with I love you forever. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. I'm Thank sorry you. we traumatized you. <laughs> I mean, for, for the better though, there is great purpose in that trauma, which is is nice to see in a, in a romantic movie like this. I know what the movie is clearly. A lot of our viewers are first gonna learn about it through South By. So which one of you would like to do the honors and give a synopsis of the film? I guess it'll be me. You go. <laughs> um, it's, it's really uh, a rom-com gone wrong that follows a woman into and out of an emotionally abusive relationship. Um, I'd say that's like the shortest way of explaining it, but it also touches on modern dating and, you know, other other stuff like that. <laughs> she does it so good. <laughs> Solid job right there. A good, a good description, but I'll warn people. It goes so far beyond that and very effectively. I love asking about the evolution of a script. So what would you say is the biggest difference between draft one of the screenplay and the final film that everyone's going to get to say? Oh, wow. A, a lot. <laughs> um, uh, you know, little things like little in terms of like what it means to the script, like where she lives names like starts there but it's um also i feel like the most important thing was the amount of like research we were able to put in and just make sure that like we nailed what it feels like to be in a relationship like this in a way that felt like it could be relatable to as many people as possible so learning about the ways people enter something like this and making sure we had like elements of that throughout the script I think was like the thing that we focused the most on and those were like the most important changes. Yeah, I mean, I guess the first draft of the script is we wanted to put so many versions of manipulation in it as possible that we ended up having to do like cuts, like pretty big cuts of, you know, a bunch of other scenes just to, just to be able to have moments that are comedic and drama, um, and and find that tone within. So we ca we caught a lot of dramatic scenes. I think it was probably the biggest difference. It always gets funnier. <laughs> I mean, it's part it's part of the process. And I I feel like I feel like something that's cut winds up elevating something that remains. So it's not like that cut thing is is long lost. You know what I mean? I honestly don't even remember the, the other drafts of this. I. I kind of do. It's been a really long time. <laughs> We've been working on this for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not easy to get a film off the ground. No. So the fact that you stuck with it and now you're here celebrating its big debut at South By is something to to celebrate. And I'm glad we're doing it right now. I wanted to bring up a, like a broader question about romantic movies. And I think in, in your director's statement, someone said the reality of dating today looks nothing like the romantic movies we grew up with. Can each of you pinpoint like a trope or a cliche from a romantic movie you saw growing up that you loved and now know is total bullshit? I think like, uh, I don't want to, because I want to leave some for the two of you, but I would say like most um, uh, relentless pursuing, I would say, um, just that we were taught through these movies that if a, a man, like if, if it's like a true love story, a man will like do anything to be with you. Um, and that's a red flag. Yeah, like the notebook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would say like a, the, if we're picking a specific movie, like Twilight, oh, go for it. Edward Cullen, like watching and stalking and all that stuff. Like that's like, we were told that a man should be obsessed with you, you know, and think about nothing else other than you. Yeah, I think also in these movies, like the guy's always like a fuck up and that's like, like a sexy thing is like a guy who just like can't get his life together. Meanwhile, that's actually just a sign of a guy who's probably not going to be a good long-term possibility, you know? We're really obsessed with saving the idea of saving someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> running through an airport. You got to run through an airport, and, and it's got to be. It's also got to be raining at some. And point then also too. in the end, you realize the right person was right in front of you all yeah. along. Yeah, right? right, exactly. Big grand gestures, big yeah. romantic gestures. They're always a journalist, which we have a journalist <laughs> in our movie. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. I feel like that's that is 
one of the falsest things about a lot of those movies, especially as a journalist. I'm like, I don't know anybody who's like that. Like <laughs> well, literally there's anybody. Like, well, there's only a few rom-com <laughs> jobs to choose from. So you're lucky we didn't make our lead actress a baker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were close. We almost other. did make they're her a architect. Muffins. There's always a montage <laughs> yeah. where, they're, where they're baking something. She almost worked at a magazine. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there any recent romance movie you've seen that that gives you hope? Like that that is a sign that not only your movie is doing this, but other movies are, are going to get it right, like while being entertaining. Mm. I, I I mean, as far as like a grounded romance story goes, I really loved the movie Like Crazy. Um, I thought that showed like a like a a really like true story about people who are in love and, you know, with its ups and downs. I really liked that movie. Mm. I like past lives a lot. Ooh, Ooh, I love that's past such lives. a good example. Yeah. I want to say past lives. Because like they're meant for each other, but then they can't be, you know? And I thought that, you know, because of the realities of life got in the way. And I thought that was, yeah, that felt realistic to oh, me. I'm here and for sweet. all the past lives shout outs. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Cassie and Lisa, I want to ask you a little bit about making your first feature a reality. Because like, again, this is a huge deal. Something to be very, very proud of. Going into this process, what did you think would be the toughest part of getting a green light on your first feature? And then ultimately, was that the toughest thing or did a different roadblock bo catch you by surprise? Um, I feel like everything feels like the toughest thing when it's like the thing right in front of you. Um, I mean, just finding someone who believes in the script and is willing to like it, it put up money to pay for something that... Um, you know, for first, two first to trust two first time directors to creatively tell a story that like, um, you know, as good as they may think the script is like letting us create it is a whole other thing and like bring that to life. Um, and I mean that, yeah, that seemed like it would be the hardest thing, but then every day on set, there was a new hard thing. <laughs> so you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. It felt very much like what I imagine having a child is like, not in the way where it's like the movie's my baby, but like how like your child does something like horribly wrong, but you like have to support the child anyway. Um, like, like it's still our movie. We still love our movie no matter what happened, you know, like we still love you. Um, We're an abusive relationship with the movie. <laughs> no, not to say that like we don't love it 100% and support it 100%, but like there's things that you don't expect to go wrong that that will and you kind of just have to roll with the punches and oh, accept Oh, I'm going to circle back to that point. But first, Great. John, I want to throw a question to you about working with the two of them because again, first feature, big deal. I have high hopes there's going to be more. What is something about them as actors, directors, and leaders on set that you appreciated and are excited for more actors to experience in the future? I felt so comfortable with them. Um, I really, yeah, I feel like they're very straightforward and I really want, I trust them a lot. So I wanted, um, I always wanted their approval a lot and wanted, I, I mean, honestly, I would ask for a line reading sometimes. Um, I don't mind that, you know, and, um, and comedically they're so sharp, so. Sometimes there would be riffing involved. They'd be like, that's a little much. Let's reel it back a little bit. Or that's good. Say that again. Maybe try this. Um, I just felt very safe with them. Both of them. Yeah. And if Cassie and I were in the scene together, a lot of time we'd be like, Lisa, what do you think? You know what I mean? We'd be checking in with her. We need constant approval yeah. and validation. <laughs> yeah, I, need I would a watch a whole validation. sitcom of just like you two being friends. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would too. And also I would love to direct it. Those, they was so much fun being like, just like being able to joke around with them. Obviously it was like a lot of, those days were a relief compared to the days with the most. Yeah, I was in scenes. a full comedy, you know? <laughs> I wasn't in the, so true. the, the well, We also said we it. will, like the next thing we make, we'll never not make a comedy again because like the days that they were dramatic scenes we were just like why did we do this oh i'll i'll uh i'll like use the same a similar phrasing that i did earlier then when you looked at the shooting schedule which scene did you think would be toughest to pull off and complete and then ultimately was that the hardest to shoot or did a different scene catch you by surprise I mean, it, I the boring answer is just like any scene that there were like s unrealistic amounts of pages to get done that like we weren't going to get done. And like the hotel we were shooting in closes at eight or whatever. Um, I mean, so I many producer brain. I would appreciate that, actually. Um, I anything, anything. I mean, I think the, we obviously thought the 
the scene, yeah, with the party, the party scene we knew was going to be hard. And it was hard because we didn't have much time to shoot it. We didn't have that many extras. <laughs> we didn't. Um, like, there were supposed to be a hundred men. <laughs> and instead we got like. 17 women. Seven, not like less, <laughs> like maybe like nine women. Um, but we made do. <laughs> Who moved around the party. Yeah. You know? yeah, they're, they're, yeah. I never would have known. Movie well, magic is a special great. thing. You can't, tell. you can't tell. I love movie magic, but also unexpected magic. Can you all recall a time when something wasn't going to plan? You found a creative way to pivot and a scene actually benefited because of it. Mm. I don't know if it benefited, but... <laughs> We, the, there's a, a scene in, that we used now as a montage that isn't a, no longer a scene where we cast this guy to play my boyfriend for the end. There was supposed to be sort of like a happy ending, like I find a guy finally who seems nice and you get to see us together. Um, he ended up getting COVID that morning. We watched his self tape. I was there and watching his self tape. We were like, this guy's amazing. We were so excited. <laughs> he was excited. so excited. We were so excited for this movie. Um, <laughs> And we ended up hiring um, what, what, the what transpo guy. Yeah, transpo. Yeah, and yeah. he played my boyfriend. Um, yeah. The scene ended up getting cut for other reasons. Other reasons, unrelated. But we we made. Do. But off that answer, like the thing that actually happened in the edit, um, you know, the, that pivot of having to cast someone else was on set, and it ended up not mattering because whatever. But changing that scene to a montage, I think, actually really helped that section of the film a lot is that dinner scene for that's her birthday um i i think it added another layer of um her relationship to sophia's character mackenzie and like what was going on because of what her relationship with finn um and i think that was great i think that was a benefit yeah maybe you know? yeah it was a benefit <laughs> I feel like this is a good transition to our, our supercut question of South by. It's a question that I'm asking everybody. We're going to put it together and hopefully make it a useful package for aspiring filmmakers. What is a seemingly silly question about what it takes to make a movie that you wish you had the courage to ask sooner? I guess, you know what? I would have liked to ask a little bit like about like, you know, set politics, you know? Like how involved should you be? How how out of it should you be as a director? Because you want everyone to feel comfortable, but you also don't want to be like in people's business, you know? And I think I should have asked someone, like how do you keep a happy set without having to take on everyone's burdens? I feel like that, like there's a magic answer to that <laughs> that no one can like pinpoint and yeah. specify, but it's like always well worth pursuing. Yeah. Um, I think like a lot of the, I think you pick up a lot of tips and tricks when you do it even once. And so as many as of those things you can gather from other directors and people who've made movies, um, the better. They're sometimes like you wouldn't even think of it, but if you're shooting someone, leaving leaving a door, like get them entering it just in case you might use it. Um, you know, just like little things like that that you wouldn't expect to be useful um, can end up being really valuable actually. This is very true. I didn't. I didn't make the movie, so I, I can't really comment <laughs> oh, uh, on, on directing. But I did get to see it from you know from from an actor's from, from, standpoint from, from, from my from my POV, and uh, yeah, I can see that it's you know it's an overwhelming experience, and you don't you don't you can't really plan and timing too in a day. I know is tricky because you'll plan to do all this stuff. You'll take usually the most time on the first thing you do that day, and then you're cramming for the rest of the day. So there would be, I've seen that pretty much on every set I've been on, where everyone's like, we don't have enough time, we gotta fucking go. But you know, everyone's. And we never uh, had enough time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to be I wouldn't know what it feel, yeah. feel like to have enough time. I don't imagine time. <laughs> I feel like that's a common thread with yeah. probably literally every single yeah. movie, honestly. Yeah. My, my thing as an actor with, with uh, double, you know, overthinking it is um, always the next day in the shower, I'll say the line, I'll go, that was the way to do it. So yeah. that's what I always think. Oh, just, I figured it out. I just figured out what how I was supposed to do that. And it's usually a week or two. As know. someone whose brain works a similar way, I yeah. understand yeah. that. <laughs> but also like your delivery and cadence together is on point in this movie. All the performances are. 
I wanted to end with a question about an upcoming film. So we, we always do this. And you two are in something that I looked up that just sounded so interesting and really piqued my interest, Stealing Pulp Fiction, which at, like sounds like the coolest movie idea ever. Are you able to tease anything about that? Yeah, shout out Danny Turkowitz. Shout out Danny Turkowitz. Um, which is where we met and how yeah. I ca- ended up casting him yeah. in I Love You Forever. Yeah, I jokingly said, hey, put me in that movie you're doing. And she was like, actually, there's a good part for you on this. I don't know, that's never happened in my life, obviously. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know if I have a, a, we have a tease, but it's... It's a very quirky comedy. Fun that's movie. Fun movie. Hopefully that's like an homage home, yeah. to, you know, Tarantino. And it's it's truly absurd. It might be the craziest thing I've ever done. And it's the first time I've ever been on a set where they didn't reel me back at all. So it's... Yeah, yeah, I'm I definitely uh, for better that. or for worse. <laughs> for better or for worse. Maybe I need to be reined in, but yeah, yeah. Jason Alexander's in it, and Karin Sony, so it's a good cast. Good group there. It's a good group. It's a good group. I read like two sentences about it and already spun it into like a cinematic universe where it's stealing like all these like oh, yeah, 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 like yeah. genre jumping and yeah. I had an genre. idea of stealing, stealing Pulp Fiction, where I steal that movie. Um, because I'm in it and I obviously hate myself and <laughs> that's the that's sequel. So, <laughs> so look out for that. <laughs> like, that's, uh, I love Scream. That's like so appropriately meta in my brain. Yeah, I kind of yeah. like that idea. Yeah, the movie within the movie within the movie. <laughs> I'm going to say congratulations on I Love You Forever. And I hope you have a wonderful time celebrating it at South by Southwest. Again, huge accomplishment. You should be very proud. Thank, thank, you, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Thank this you. is great. 